I just finished watching Cobra Kai and I was actually really surprised. It's a continuation of the original Karate Kid story. You get back into the world kind of through the eyes of William Zabka's character, Johnny Lawrence, who was the, the bad guy in the first, the original Karate Kid. He is down on his luck. He's almost homeless. All he's got is pretty much his car and he's, you know, not doing great. So a new family moves in next door. This kid, Miguel, is talking with him and kind of trying to be his friend a little bit. I thought Miguel did great in this show. I thought his whole arc from beginning to end, his transformation from this real weak character to this real strong, confident character was uh, logical, that it made sense throughout, that everything that was happening, you could kind of track, you could see up until the end. And uh, that was kind of where it lost me. The first... I think the first nine episodes, well, so I'll say the first episode I think is great. The next eight are good, and I really didn't enjoy the last one, I think, to be fair. It's, the last one was the worst. The middle eight were, were good. They weren't anything ex exceptional. I have really enjoyed the first one. So Johnny Lawrence sees Miguel getting picked on, and these kids throw him into his car, throw Miguel onto his car. And that's when Johnny gets involved. It's actually in the trailer. It's kind of the whole inciting moment of him stepping back into responsibility in life. Like he just kind of had given everything up. This moment kind of forced him to, or are you just going to sit, sit aside and let life go by? Or are you going to actually get up and do something? And that's when he decides to do something. And through this kid, Miguel, he sees an opportunity to start up the old Cobra Kai, the old karate dojo, and train Miguel in how to do karate because it kind of gives him a purpose, a thing to do with his life. And so through that, he starts giving Miguel more confidence and Miguel, you know, ends up getting a girlfriend and, you know, in enters into the, the karate championship, fights off his bullies, does all this stuff that helps him be more of a man be more confident and what I what I really enjoyed was Johnny Lawrence as a mentor doesn't understand why the things that he wants them to do works he just knows it works and it's kind of a hard point to explain but there's no reasoning behind what he's doing he's just like man up suck it up don't do that and uh the majority of the time it ends up helping the kids because really what happens is they are challenged and they overcome the challenge they are better for it and it's not really about the challenge specifically but Johnny sees it as well let's just you know this is how I was raised this is how you're going to learn but it's more about the challenge and I kind of wish they would have played with that a little bit more though I, I don't know there was a lot of clues that Johnny saw. Maybe I'm being too hard or maybe I'm not, you know, doing this the right way and different things like that. But it would end up working. And so he would be more reinforced about what he was doing and that he was doing it the right way. But I really liked him as a mentor character and him not not being OK with weakness and failure and him pushing them to go beyond that and be um, honorable doesn't feel like the right word, but have strong character is what he was always pushing them towards whatever it was is don't be afraid don't be scared you know just be strong of character the main conflict between for johnny lawrence is daniel larusso who is the original karate kid and i really thought it was cool how they established danny larusso as the antagonist to johnny lawrence in the beginning having Daniel become somewhat of the bully now that they're adults having Daniel having beaten his bully has now taken his place and that how power can corrupt even the best of us that you have that opportunity and you can become a jerk and I was very concerned going into the show that they wouldn't stay true to that that they would use that to open the door to get back into Daniel LaRusso's story this is going to be spoilers for I guess from here on out so if you want to watch it yourself I I do recommend the show but the end is disappointing so the story is basically 
if Daniel had ended up at Cobra Kai and Johnny had ended up with Mr. Miyagi, how would it turn out? And that's what they did. They took this really weak character, put him in a Cobra Kai and made him strong and aggressive and mean. And then they took this really rough and mean character and put him with Daniel LaRusso and made him really uh, positive and honorable. And they face off at the end. Miguel actually ends up winning by cheating, sort of, uh, by not fighting with honor. He knew that uh, Rory's arm was hurt and attacked his arm and kept going like at that, similar to the way Johnny attacked Daniel's leg in the original movie. Part of my issue with the last episode is there was a lot of things that were in reference to the original, that the original movie, that don't really add up if you consider this to be reality, like there's one scene where uh, Rory's arm is messed up and Daniel son or, or Dan, Daniel uh, LaRusso claps his hands together and starts rubbing them together and then stops and calls for a medic. And the only reason he, they did that was to reference when Mr. Miyagi rubbed his hands together and basically did magic and fixed Daniel son's leg. Uh, they, I don't, I didn't get why he would actually do that other than for the audience benefit. And so stuff like that, I, I don't, I don't really care for, um, just because it, it takes you out of the show. And so I, I felt like the last episode, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of callbacks at the end. They kind of undo everything that I really enjoyed about the show. Having had Johnny Lawrence be the, the protagonist and Daniel LaRusso be the antagonist. The last episode just, changes that completely johnny lawrence still has room he's still sympathetic he's still kind of the main character but his student miguel has completely just become the villain as much as a high schooler can be uh he ends up getting drunk in the second to last episode accidentally punches his girlfriend because he's trying to fight rory they fight in the all valley tournament and then he just he yells at his ex-girlfriend about oh i'm gonna I'm going to really beat this guy up. You need to watch and see. And like, I don't know. It, it didn't make a lot of sense. That transition. Like I I can see it. It was just too quick. They needed to do that. I would say start that transition two or three episodes earlier for it to feel earned. It felt very, very fast for how everything else was happening. I mean, they kind of flirted with it, but, I don't know. If you watch it, I think you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Between nine and ten episodes, of nine and ten, there is a, a a massive transition, and so you end the show where Daniel Larusso is kind of the hero, and they he's opening up Mr. Miyagi's old gym, and he's gonna start training people, and Johnny Lawrence's old uh, sensei shows back up, and he's smoking a cigar in the shadows and is like oh they couldn't shut us down and you you brought us back from the ashes or whatever and it's just that was like cartoonishly villainous and it, it, that I really didn't enjoy my assumption for the next season is going to be Johnny Lawrence leaves Cobra Kai and goes to train with Daniel and they're going to be kind of a yin and yang situation with each other I, I thought it would happen in this first season so I guess if I just keep making the same prediction, maybe it'll come true eventually. It's the law of ad- averages. But uh, I do think that's where they're heading with it, that uh, the old sensei is going to be really bad, and Johnny Lawrence is going to leave and join up with Daniel, and they're all going to work together, and Miguel is going to continue off into his spiral into darkness. <laughs> Earlier I'd mentioned the middle, you know, the main chunk, the episodes two through nine were kind of uh they were good but not great they they were carrying a lot of uh stories story elements story arcs for a very small amount of characters daniel's daughter is dating miguel and they end up having like a romeo and juliet type issue where daniel doesn't want her hanging out with anyone from cobra kai uh johnny doesn't want anyone he doesn't want miguel hanging out with uh any of the larusos and so that's an issue then rory is training with daniel um (laughs) because he wants to get back at his dad 
but Daniel doesn't know and Johnny doesn't know. And then there's this love weird love triangle between Rory and uh, Daniel's daughter and Miguel. And then so there's a lot of these smaller like plots that are happening, which is fine, except they all come to a head kind of at the same time. So you have like these five, six spinning plates of a plot and they all fall down at once. And it just felt kind of too forced, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, there's a lot of kind of typical high school drama throughout the show, which, I mean, it's somewhat set in a high school, but it's also not. It's It, it doesn't feel like Degrassi or 13 Reasons Why. It feels more along the lines of maybe Bad News Bears, like you have an adult treating high schoolers like they're adults. And uh, I think it works really well. It comes off very authentic, which I I really appreciate. Um, So, I don't know, I'm kind of rambling. But overall, I think the show is good. Uh, I I have, I'm nervous for the next season because of where they ended. It could go south really quickly. So if you cut out that last episode, I think it's a great show that has a lot of potential so if they can get back to the heart of that for the next season if there's going to be a next season which i I, i'd be shocked if there wasn't uh i think it could be really really good 